So we're going to be wanting to handle data. In physics, we're often handling data. The solar cycles, solar sunspots are one example of data. Uh, but we're often working with all sorts of different collections of data. Yeah, position coordinates are an example. Um, in Python and in Python packages, we'll be using two distinct ways to handle collections of data. So one of them is called lists, and that's sort of native to Python. And one of them is arrays that come with the NumPy package. So we're going to be talking about lists and arrays in, in today's class. And we're also going to be talking a bit about getting data into those lists or getting data into those arrays. So um, lists, let's start with lists. Where we got lists? So lists are kind of, in Python, are kind of just um, collections. A list is a collection of quantities. Uh, it's a bit like a shopping list, perhaps. It can be a collection of different quantities. So it could be a, a kind of collection of strings, um, numbers, or some mix of strings and numbers. A collection of all sorts of, of things. Um, in Python, if you've got a list, you can add things to the list. And you can remove things from the list. So you can append things to the list and you can pop things off the list. So you can um, lengthen the li list and you can, you can shorten the list. In Python, there's also some tools. There's functions that will tell you the length of the list. There's functions that will tell you the sum of the items in the list. So there are some tools. So that's, that's, that's lists. Um, let me say a few words about arrays. So um, arrays uh, come with a numpy package. So you would have to import the numpy package to use arrays. So arrays, uh, they're more like, um, if you have a one-dimensional array, it's basically like a vector. If you have a two-dimensional array, it's basically like a matrix. Unlike um, lists, the elements of an array must all be of the same type, all, all of the same data type. So they'd all have to be integers, or they'd all have to be floats. You can't mix integers or floats or strings in um, uh, numpy uh, arrays. Um, so that's one thing about them. Another thing about them is that uh, an array, if you declare, define an array, has fixed length array. So you can't later on append to the array or pop things off the array. You have to define the length of the array when you declare the length of the array. So that's that's another thing about array. So th those sound like a couple of disadvantages potentially, right? You have to have just one data type and you have a, a fixed length or vector or fixed length matrix. There are a number of advantages though. Um, arrays allow you to handle the algebra that you would do with vectors, for example, or the algebra that you might do with matrices in a much more straightforward way. So if you're dealing with um, numerical quantities that are arrays, that represent vectors, that represent matrices, then arrays typically much better than using lists to do that. Okay, so let's look at um, some just sample programs, sample codes that, that use lists and use arrays, introduce lists and introduce arrays. Um, I'm just going to imagine a simple, simple um, collection of data handling. Maybe I've made, I'm going to make four measurements of the acceleration of gravity. And I'm going to one way or another way, reading those four me measurements. So that's sort of handling a bit of data. Um, and then I'm going to use lists to calculate the average and the variance of my measurements of the acceleration of gravity. I'm going to go use arrays to calculate the average and the variance 
of my uh, measurements of the acceleration of gravity. So it's just a simple example, um, uh, but it's an example or resemble what you'll do with the sunspots. Somebody's already measured the sunspots for you, but there's a lot more sunspots than, than four. And you're gonna read all those sunspots in and you're gonna look at some of the statistics of the, the, the sunspots. Okay, so what am I doing now? Good question. Okay, so I want to start by um, looking at lists and calculating um, the mean and the variance of um, a list with four measurements in it. And then we'll move on to looking at arrays and do the, the, the same things for arrays. So let me just start with, I'm gonna imagine I've made four measurements. And so N is gonna represent my, my number of measurements. And I'm going to put those measurements in a, in a list. And so here's the, the format for declaring a list. Now, this way of declaring a list, this de just declares X to be a list, to, but to be an empty list. I've got nothing in the list right now. I'm just going to declare x to be the, the variable name for my, for my list. And then I'm going, to read the, I'm going to read the numbers in, in this case, as an example from, uh, from the terminal. I'm going to input in them at the terminal. And that, that, I just want to do that as another example using um, the control statements that we talked about in the last class. Okay, so I'm going to uh, define another variable, i. It's just going to be a counter. And it's going to count how many um, measurements I've entered, how many measurements of the acceleration of gravity at event. I haven't entered any yet, so I'm going to set it, set it to be zero. And then with a while control statement, I'm just going to walk through entering the data until I've got my four measurements. That's it from doing C++. I put colons in. Semicolon. Uh, I'm gonna, I can't blame that on that. Um, I'm gonna enter my four measurements. I'm gonna go around a little loop, go around a little while loop, entering one by one the, the measurements until I reach, uh, uh, till I reach entering four measurements. Okay. So I'm gonna grab here the measurements from the terminal. I mean, I really am a very good speller, except when I get up here. Um, here we are. I'm going to enter my measurements and I'm going to assign them to this variable xi. So that's the, um, the, the value that I've input. And then I'm gonna append that value to that list that I defined. So each time I call append, that function append on that list, the argument is the value that I'm going to append to that list. And so um, this will append the items to the list. And the other thing I've got to remember is I've got this counter that's going to count, it's going to increment, it's going to count how many uh, members I've added to the list. And so I, every time I add one, I want to, um, I want to increment that. Okay. So in this way, I can build my list X that's containing my measurements of the acceleration of gravity. So let's, let's put them in. I measured 9.8 meters per second squared. 
Uh, then measured 9.9. Uh, then, oh, what went wrong there? Point nine, uh, nine point six was my third measurement. Nine point nine was my last measurement. And so here we have we we've entered the data. And so at this point, uh, I built this list, this Python list, containing the containing the data. If we were to print it. We see here, this is the format for printing a list. So in the rectangular brackets, separated by commas are the, um, are the items in the list. Okay. So now I wanna calculate two statistical quantities from my data. And they're gonna be the average uh, value of my four measurements, and they're going to be the variance, which reflects how much the um, the, the numbers differ, the individual measurements differ from the mean, mean value. So for the average, I'll just call that variable average here. Um, there's a couple of handy functions that you can perform on lists that make the calculation of the average very straightforward. So one of them is sum. We've got a list of numbers here. Uh, we can call the function sum with the argument being the list, and it's going to add up the items in the list. And um, another function that's handy here is length or len. Okay, if I I call that function with the argument being the list, it's going to tell me how long the list is. So I'm just adding up the items in the list, dividing by the number of items in the list, and and that's going to give me the that's going to give me the average. So I could at that point print the average, and so we get nine point eight because I have four numbers, two nine point nines, one point nine point six, and one nine point eight, and the average is uh, nine point eight. So that's how I could get the um, average. We also want the variance. And the variance is a little more complicated to calculate when you've got lists. And we'll see that an advantage of arrays is the uh, variance, if you calculate the variance using arrays, it's gonna be, it's gonna be a simpler process. So this illustrates where lists, they have some flexibility in being able to um, change the length of the list to stretch it out or reduce it. Um, but they have some limitations in the arithmetic or the mathematics you can do with the items in the list. And here, here is a limitation. Um, what I'm gonna have to do to calculate the, the, the variance of the measurements. So the variance of the measurements is you take the difference between the mean and individual measurement. You square that difference between the mean and the individual measurement. And then you sum all those differences. And then you divide by the number of measurements minus one. That will give you the variance. And the minus one is because actually you've already calculated one item from the list. You calculated the mean. That's why it's divided by n minus one. So we, we've got to do that, um, but we've got to do it, perform that calculation element by element. So we've got to go walk through the four elements. We're going to walk through the four elements with a four statement that will loop through the four elements. And so um, let me go ahead and do that. I'm, I'm going to define a new variable uh, variance, and I'm going to set it equal, initialize it to zero to begin with. And then I'm going to um, have a for loop. Again, this has this format of the control statement. And then for the for loop, we specify the, um, the, the loop that we're going to take. 
So in, in this in this format here, uh, we're going to walk through the elements of X. So that's our list. Um, assigning XI to be each successively each element of that, that list. And we, we terminate that uh, control statement with a colon here. And then here's going to be my line of code that will actually do the arithmetic of calculating the variance. So each time I go around this loop, I'm going to uh, calculate the difference between the average value and the individual measurement. I'm going to square that up and then I'm going to increment variance, the variable by that amount. And then when I go through that for each item in the list, the four items in the list, that will give me, that will give me um, the sum of the squares of the differences between the measurements and the average. And then I've just got to divide by, I just got to divide by um, uh, N minus one. And so this, that's this last line here. Um, again, this is just the, shorthand, I could write the variance equals variance divided by M minus one. Um, like we could write um, X equals X plus one if we want to increment X. Um, but just here's a shorthand way of doing it. it just means I'm going to take variance and divide it by this, this quantity on the right hand side. Okay. And so we could then print variance. And so if we go ahead and um, run that, it's calculated the variance for it. And here is the variance. Remember the square root of the variance is the standard deviation. Uh, so the square root of, um, uh, well, it, this is 0 0.02, the, the square root of um, 0 0.0, can't do the square root in my head. Let's calculate the square root. Oh, but I can't calculate the square root because I didn't import the um, uh, NumP library. So I would need to import the NumP library to calculate the square root. Anyway, this, this, is, this is the variance, um, which, which reflects, you know, the bigger the variance is, the more scattered the data was. Uh, the smaller the variance is, the less scattered the data is. And so it's a, an important number when you're handling data because it reflects how, how well or less well you've determined, for example, the mean that we've calculated in, in this particular case. Everybody happy with that? So that's, that's a list. Um, and that would be the procedure for how we would calculate those statistical quantities with a list. And um, you, could, you could do the uh, sunspot assignment by working with lists, but I would recommend working with arrays. Okay. So let, let me look at a second example. Um, where we, we will work with, um, rather than working with the, the list, we'll work with um, uh, arrays, which are part of the NumP library. And I also want to look at um, a second example because I want to read the data in in a different way. I again typed in the numbers there, but um, that, that could get very laborious. Uh, so we want to be able to read data from a file. Um, yeah, I want to read data from a file.
first thing I'm going to do here is import the numpy library uh, as mp because we're going to use that. The second thing I want to do is I've got a, a file on my Google Drive. Uh, I've also put it in Canvas so you can grab this file. And it's a text file and it contains the um, data on sunspots, the number of sunspots per year since sort of 1700, something like that. Um, so you'll use, you'll be wanting to read that file, but I've also got on my Google Drive, I've got a file that contains these four measurements that I made of the acceleration of gravity. So that's what I'm gonna read in here, but if in your, um, in your solving of the assignment, you'll, you'll, you'll want to do a similar thing to read in the sunspot. I've got to copy this because I can never remember this. Well, I'm going to want to um, uh, import from my Google Drive. So there's a couple of things I have to do here. I have to mount the, the drive with this function mount here. That's in this um, uh, Google Collab library. So I'm gonna grab that. And then I'll be able to once I've done that, I'll be able to access my file, hopefully. What did I do wrong? Oh, yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Okay, so now, I mean, I've imported NumP and I've got access to my Google Drive. So the first thing I'm gonna do is read in the data from a file on my Google Drive. So for that, I'm gonna use, it's a package in NumP, it's load text. Um, We'll, we'll talk about in the next class more ways of reading in data from a file. There's a, um, there's a whole library, Pandas, that's a data analysis package that has a lot of flexibility in reading data in from text files or uh, all sorts of files. So we'll, we'll do it a, look at a bit more sophisticated package for reading data from files on, um, on Wednesday's class, I think. But here I'm just going to use this load text. And then it had just has an argument uh, which is the location of the, the file. So that's going to be content, gosh. Drive, I think it's my drive. And then I think I've got it in courses. Um, it's going to be a miracle if I get this right. But apparently miracles do happen. I um, don't know how that one did. Okay, so now I've got, um, I read in my data. And maybe I could just check, I can print out my data. And here are those measurements. So I just put the same measurements in a data file and now I've got them into my code. So obviously this is a much more uh, flexible way to reading data than just inputting it from the terminal. So this time, 
x, what we've done is we've read the data into this variable x, but this variable x is a, um, a numpy, we use a numpy load text package to write it, to read it into a numpy array rather than a sort of native list. And so we're gonna be using the kind of tools of the numpy array to calculate the average and variance. And that's where you're gonna see things more straightforward, uh, much more straightforward. So for the average, there's again functions to give us the sum of the elements of the array. Um, and the length of the array and dividing one by the other will give us the average value of the array and we can print that. And what, oh no, I printed X, then I, not the average. So here's the average value as we had previously calculated. But now we can, um, calculate the variance in a, in a simpler way without having to step through all the elements of the array uh, of, of a list to figure out the um, contributions to the variance. So let, let me just type it in and then I'll say a few words about it. Okay, so if you look at this calculation of the variance, remember the variance again is you, you take the difference between a measurement and the mean, you square that difference between the measurement and the mean, and you sum the squares of those differences. That whole business, that whole part of the calculation can be done in just this little piece here. So, with arrays, you can write out the arithmetic that you want to do with the arrays as, as if it was just a simple, you know, scalar variable. And so look here, here's the difference between the average and the elements of the array. I'm squaring that and then I'm summing, summing up all those contributions. And so this is how I can carry out the kind of vector arithmetic to calculate the variance. And then I'm just dividing that sum of the square differences by the um, length of the array, the number of data points minus one. And then I printed the variance. And again, of course, we've got the same values because I used the same data as when we were working with the list. Okay. So the idea of the, those exercises of calculating the average of my four measurements of the acceleration of gravity was just to introduce lists, uh, introduce um, arrays, to look at some of the pros and cons of lists versus arrays, you know, that you're able to change the length of a list, add to or subtract from it. You can't change the length of an array can't add to or subtract from it. Um, but on the other hand, you can do this arithmetic more that we needed to do for the variance. You might need to do for other reasons, much more sim simply with um, arrays than you can do with, with lists. So you can do vector arithmetic. You can do matrix arithmetic uh, more simply with arrays than you can do with lists. Does that all make sense? Okay. What, one last topic I wanted to mention, is, which is called slicing. So slicing, you can slice 
uh, lists and you can slice arrays and slicing will likely be useful to you when you um, work on the uh, sunspot assignment and slicing allows you to cut out of or chop out of a an array or a list uh, part of that array or list so it's a way of um, um, manipulating arrays and lists it's a way of um, of manipulating data it's a way of handling data so slicing is a very useful sort of data analysis uh, technique Okay, so I'm going to take a couple of um, uh, NumPy arrays, a one-dimensional one and a two-dimensional one, and then I'm just going to show you the format of slicing. So to do that, I've again got to import um, NumPy, that's PY. Five. And then I'm going to define a, a, a couple of arrays to just play around with, really. Um, and I'm just going to call them A and B. Uh, I'm going to show you here, in case you've not met it, a different way of defining an array um, rather than reading it in from uh, a text file, for example, or reading it in as input from the, from the terminal. There's other ways of defining arrays. There's um, NP zeros where you can define an array that contains all zeros. There's NP ones where you can define an array that contains all ones. Or there's this NP array, I'll show you it here, where you actually enter the elements of the array. Uh, so my first array, I'm just gonna make it a six element array. One, two, three, four, five, six. And so that's the array that I'm gonna define and you have to specify the type. And so we'll just make that an integer array. I think there's other arguments to this uh, function that defines the array, but typically I've only ever used these first two arguments, define the numbers and the type of the array. Okay, so that's array A, which is a one dimensional array, it's one by six. And I'll make a second array. And we'll make this a two-dimensional array, so like a matrix. And um, let me just show you the format of that. It's this format here. So this is a, a array that will have two rows, three columns. So there's an outer set of square brackets in which we're defining the two dimensional array. And then there's a pair of inner square brackets. This is the top row on the left of the array. And over here on the right, this is the bottom row of the array. And they're separated by a comma. So this is how you would define a three-dimensional, a two-dimensional array. And we want a data type for that. So I'll make that integer also. And so hopefully oh, something went wrong. NP, oh yeah. Here's our, here's our two, two arrays, A and B, a one-dimensional and two-dimensional array. Um, we can just check them out a little bit with some of the um, functions that are available for uh, arrays in, in NumPy. So if I think, let's think about um, array A. Uh, there's a function size, so we can print the size of the array. It's a six-element array. There's a, a function shape, 
that will, in this case, would distinguish between the six element arrays A and B. One of them is a one by six, one of them is a two by three. And uh, of course you, you can print out the array itself, so just A. So um, the size function tells us it's a six element array. The size, this, this formatting here tells you that it's a one dimensional array. Uh, and that one dimension has six elements. And then in square brackets here, this is just printing A. And you notice this, this looks like a bit like when we printed a, the list from the first example, but in the list, the elements were separated by commas. Uh, when you print a array uh, inside the square brackets, the elements are not separated by commas. If we do the same thing for B, So we print its size, we print its shape, and we print the elements of B. Here's the printout. So it also has a size of six because there's six elements in it, but it's shape two by three. Uh, so there's two rows, three columns. And then here is the printout for the um, array itself. So the top row, again, in this left-hand square brackets, the bottom row in this right-hand square brackets. So that's just checking that uh, what we defined as our arrays A and B makes sense when we print uh, their characteristics out and print the, actually print them out. Okay, so now let's just, just do a little bit of slicing. Um, so when you slice an array, I'm gonna slice the array A um, and slice it into a new array S, the sliced array. Um, for a one dimensional array, when you slice it, the, you, the format is the square brackets and inside the square brackets is a colon. And a number prior to the colon is the number that the sliced array begins with, the element that it begins with, and a number after the colon is the um, uh, number that is one minus that is the number that the sliced array goes to. So just a, that was kind of a mouthful of saying that, but I think you'll see more easily if I just give a couple of examples. So remember our array A is just six, a one dimensional array is six elements. If I was to put the argument zero, before the colon, I'm gonna start with the first element. If I put the argument two after the colon, that means I'm gonna two minus one is one. I'm gonna end my slice array on that second element, that's the one. So if I do that, let's check. If I print the sliced array, it's just uh, one and two. So it's just the, the first two elements run from the first element, the zero, we would call that the zeroth element, to the second element here. If I put, um, if I start from two and uh, go to four, that's gonna give me um, zero is the first element, uh, one is the, in the array, one is the second element. This is gonna give me the third and the fourth elements. So three and four, I've cut out these, these two elements here. If you don't give the argument before the colon, it starts from the first element. So if we don't give that argument, it's gonna give us one, two, three, four. If we did give that argument, but we didn't give the last element, then it's gonna start from the element referred to here. So this would be the third element and run to the end of the array. That would be the sliced array. And so there we get three, four, five, six. And so that's slicing up A, an example of slicing A. And then let's look at the format for slicing B. Um, so again, I'll call S the 
array that I slice out of B. Again, I've got uh, square brackets inside which the slicing, um, the definition of the slicing will be. But I'm going to have a comma in here, and I'm going to have a slice for the rows, and I'm going to have a slice, um, yeah, for each separate, uh, for the rows and for the columns. So easiest, I'll give you an example. So when I did this slice here, uh, before the comma, I've just got this one, one here. It's meaning taking the, so the, counting the rows, counting the columns starts from zero. So a one here will mean take the second, taking the second row. So it's gonna be this, this guy here. So that's the slice on the rows. And then after the comma, this is the slice on the commas. Um, this says take the elements of this second row here, take the first element, that's the zeroth element, up to two minus one, that would be this second element here. So we're just gonna, we're just gonna slice out the four and the five. And so that's the format for that. If I, um, remove the two, then it would slice all the way to the end of that row. I get four, five, and six. I don't need the zero if I want to do that because it would slice from the very beginning to the very end. If I wanted to slice the first row rather than the, um, the second row, then I would put a zero here. And I get the one, two, and three. So that's an example of slicing for it a two-dimensional matrix.